My name is Dale Kerrigan, and this is my story. In 1997, we saw the release of a pretty unique Australian comedy. It was called The Castle, and it was about a family living happily in their modest home right next to the airport. They are the Kerrigan family. In the film, we are told the house is at number three Highview Crescent, Coolaroo, but in reality, it's at number three Dagonet Street, Essendon Fields. Permission was given to film on the property by the people who were renting at the time, who never informed the actual owner. Many years later, the property was subdivided and the owner sold the house at an auction in 2017. The house went for $40,000 to George Fendike and Jeffrey Lucas. They're going to take our place and we don't get a say in it. So the house was taken apart, bit by bit, wrapped up in plastic and thrown onto the back of a truck for its journey to Beechworth, Victoria. This is Dagonet Street. Uh, the family home in the castle is right at the end of this street. Uh, we're just going to go and have a look at it. We're in the uh, suburb of, I think, Strathern or Essendon. My GPS will tell me one or the other depending on the time of day. So uh, we're just going to go up this street and have a look. Nothing left. The Kerrigan's family home now gone. They even got rid of the tree. Gone. There must have been the whole property there as well. They built another house there, subdivided it looks like. Planes. Yeah, it would be a bit noisy living here. Dale dug a hole. This is going straight to the pool room. Dad, some guy's selling an overhead projector. What's he asking? 150. <laughs> Tell him he's dreaming. Yeah. yeah. Daryl Kerrigan. In his backyard looking up at power lines that don't seem to exist. He reckons power lines are a reminder of man's ability to generate electricity. There are no power lines. Not there, not anywhere. They've started replacing the house. The house that Daryl Kerrigan wouldn't sell for anything. Not a million dollars. It's not really like that in real life. They've even replaced the house next door. Sellouts. The castle was made by Working Dog, who were originally a group of comedians called the D-Generation. They used to appear on television and radio. They had a hilarious show in the 90s called The Late Show with the D-Generation. Which uh, featured live and recorded sketches. Uh, comedians like uh, Mick Malloy and Tony Martin and Jane Kennedy, Rob Sitch, who's the director of the castle, I used to enjoy just waiting for him to crack up. And we resulted in <laughs> champagne. <laughs> then they did Frontline, which was a satire on a current affairs, and it was such a good show, and it was so spot on that actual current affairs shows had to really take a good hard look at themselves. Well, I'm gonna go now and check out all the other locations that are in the castle. And leave them to it. Right, I'm off. After the Kerrigan family receive a letter informing them that due to the expansion of the airport next door, there will be a compulsory acquisition of their house for $70,000. Daryl believes it's unconstitutional to evict his family and takes it up with the council. That's why you'll be duly compensated. No, you've missed the point. I'm not interested in compensation. I don't want to go. Several scenes were filmed on Sydney Road, Brunswick. Daryl seeks the assistance of his solicitor, Dennis Denuto, and somehow convinces Dennis to represent him and his neighbours in court. This is Dennis Denuto's office. Up there. What do you mean you're not qualified? I mean, I'm not in the big time. Looks like it's in line to be demolished. 
Uh, the shot of Daryl walking up the street is in a different location. It's certainly not here. They probably changed it because this is not as interesting to look at. It's definitely on Sydney Road, just like the last location. But this film was shot in two weeks. The director would not have wanted to go all over Melbourne shooting his scenes. In this scene, Michael Caton crosses Sydney Road to go here. And the film cuts to a second floor, which actually looks like this. Many people call him the black sheep of the family. Like most historical buildings in Melbourne, Pentridge has been redeveloped into apartments. Thanks for coming, Dale. You want some chewy? Dad had a song he used to sing about going to Bonnie Doon. Only he sang it a lot, and it was a bit repetitive. We're going to Bonnie Doon. Where we go? Bonnie Doon. We're going to Bonnie Doon. We're going to Bonnie Doon. Does Bonnie Doon qualify as Melbourne? Is this real streets of Melbourne? It's kind of northern far northern suburbs. Bonnie Doon is a nice blink and you'll miss it town that sells the famous Serenity Burger at their one-stop shop roadhouse. This is where the Kerrigans go on their holiday. of a measuring measuring stick in the film showing the lake being really uh, low but it's not here I can't see it anywhere they might have uh, the filmmakers might have put that in maybe just for effect the waters are definitely down just like in the film got a nibble but this is I believe this is the probably where they were the Kerrigans were fishing and um, Dale Kerrigan is talking about how his fishing rod bends, You're bragging about that. It's just a very funny, so I don't even know why it's funny. It's just very simple. Um, uh, it's just very Australian, very funny. The Kerrigan Holiday Home is actually available to be rented by anyone who wants a nice trip up to Bonnie Doon. No, seriously, what are you waiting for? Yeah, he loved the serenity of the place. How's the serenity? Yeah. So much serenity. I can see it. This is where Daryl Kerrigan stood here with his son talking about the serenity and it's a beautiful place. What a beautiful view. If you have a look here. How's the serenity? This is where Eric Banner was punching the punching bag. He was doing this. Yep. And they've just kept it as it is. This is fantastic. Doghouse. It's in the film. In the scene where we get the flashback of Daryl when he first bought the block of land in Bonnie Doon, the filmmakers simply shot this directly across the road from the house. It's still vacant, probably because of the power lines. You just can't walk in and steal our home. You will be compensated. Law is supposed to be about justice, no fairness. This is a blatant violation of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Australia. And when it comes to violations, they don't come any bigger. 
Mr. Kerrigan. Yeah, yeah. It's the Constitution, it's Marbo, it's justice, it's law, it's the vibe, and uh, no, that's it, it's the vibe. How you going? Oh, fine, fine. This is the area where Daryl goes out for a smoke and he meets Lawrence, who unbeknownst to Daryl is a QC. And Daryl tells him about the house that's being acquired. Oh, bloody government's trying to take my house. And Daryl tells Lawrence all about the, uh, the court case and how the government want to take away his house. And that turns out to be a good thing. So things start to turn around for Daryl, but it all happens here. And it's all still here, completely unchanged. It's great. Lawrence takes over the case, and now Daryl has a real chance at keeping his home. But they come here to Canberra, to the High Court of Australia. And that's about it. All that is left to do now is to go to Beechworth and see if I can find the Kerrigan home. Beechworth is an historical town located in the northeast of Victoria. The Kerrigan House was transported here with the intention of it becoming a reception house for a caravan park. After searching the entire town, I arrived at Mayday Hills to find an old decommissioned asylum which was built in the 1800s. While looking around this interesting place, I noticed something tucked away at the back of the property. Great quote from the film, and a wooden statue of Daryl Kerrigan. I just asked somebody if I could come in and have a look, and they said yes, so here I am. The Kerrigan house. But it's not a house, it's a home. So much history. I wonder if that was the pool room. Okay, so it's not still in pieces as described in an article I read a month or so ago. What do you call this? Chicken. It's got something sprinkled on it. Seasoning. Oh, Steve, could you move the Chimera? I need to get the Tirana out so I can get to the Commodore. I'll have to get the keys of Cortina. I'm gonna move that Chimera. Yeah, watch the boat, mate. Yeah. Here's the front door where Daryl Kerrigan uh, stood in many scenes, many scenes where uh, the guy from the uh, council came to visit him to give him an estimate on the price of the house and well, the guy that came to threaten Daryl to accept the offer it was all there. And that's the front door from the outside. Well, there it is. Not too bad, I was expecting worse, but it's coming along. And it Probably won't be in a caravan park anytime soon. The council said no to that. Tell them to get stuffed. I was thinking the same thing actually, just not in those words. So George Fendike's dream was not uh, fully realized, but here the house will sit at the Beechworth Lunatic Asylum. Hmm. That's really what it's called, former lunatic asylum. And I guess there's nothing more to say other than my name is Paul and that was my location video.